Lee Walsh. I've got StreamYard down here with all my other social medias. Hello, Facebook. Hi, Twitter. Hi, YouTube. Hi, uh, where else? No Instagram tonight. Hi, TikTok. How are you? I like to go live for a few minutes before I go into my private exclusive Zoom room on Patreon. So first thing I always like to hear is um, where you're watching from. It's always interesting. I know TikTok in particular, you guys are around the world, but also on my other social media. Let me get the banner going and let's see if I can open up your comments here. Comments. There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm America's relationship expert, and I have been studying the science of love for a few decades now. And yes, it absolutely is a science. There are biological pieces, psychological pieces, sociological pieces. Hello, Janice from Sudbury. Nice to see you. Um, let me know where you're watching from. I have TikTok going too for you guys on StreamYard who may be on. Janice, where are you? You're on YouTube. Hi, Linda from Pasadena. You're over on Facebook. Welcome. Um, who on TikTok, where are you guys watching from? Thank you for the kind things you're saying. Hi, Florida. How are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Philippines. How are you? See, I have to go up to see over the top. Let me, maybe I can slide it up. Hello, Sydney, Australia. How are you? Austin, Dubai. Hello, Dustin from Chicago. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, who else we got up there on TikTok? Anyway, so I like to go live for 10 or 15 minutes before I go over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. And I open up my exclusive Zoom room where we have a lively, interesting conversation, usually about somewhere between eight and 20 people. And it's great fun over there. Hello, Arizona. Thanks for joining me. Hi from Maine. Nice to see you. Uh, okay, Dustin's leading in Chicago. He's got starting with our first question. Let me put up on screen from YouTube. Uh, is it better to stay in a relationship that triggers your nervous system and heal or leave and find someone who doesn't trigger you? Well, it depends on the extent of the triggering. If the two of you can agree to go to psychotherapy together, you can both learn and grow. Because I'm assuming that if this person triggers you, they're either too anxious or too avoidant, which is not a good match for you. But the two of you can work to become closer together, right? Um, uh, oh my gosh, Cornwall on Ken and Margaret McKenzie send their best wishes. Well, thank you, Elena McKenzie Richard. Are you like a grand niece, cousin? I think you are. Um, I think you are Aunt Barb's granddaughter, maybe? I love social media because people come on from all over the world, which is a lot exciting. Thank you on TikTok for saying the nice things. Hello, Netherlands up on TikTok. How are you? Um, always let me know where you're watching from and pop me up a question. If you have a question about the science of love, about your personal relationship stuff, um, Dustin in Chicago asked me about, is it better to stay in a relationship that triggers you and try to heal or leave and find someone better? You know, relationships are a gymnasium for our minds. We can't heal alone. We need to be pushing against somebody, but it is always better to do it with a therapist. Ah, our parents were best friends. So you are Aunt Barb's daughter, Elena? I'm confused. Did I miss somebody growing up? I'm starting to delete some of my memories just because I'm old. I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm just losing it. What do I think about emotional affairs? Excellent question from TikToker. Uh, what do I think about emotional affairs? They're affairs and they are an emotional betrayal. Whether you physically touch somebody, uh, you can still get a hit of dopamine just by reading their texts. And it sometimes involves betrayal because sometimes you're um, confiding in this person. You're confiding in them about your primary relationship, which could be a boundary violation. So yeah, an emotional affair is an affair because it can wreak havoc, wreak havoc in your own relationship. I always say like, this is a good guideline rule. Would you say or do anything by text, phone, you know, workplace, friendship? Would you behave in that relationship, that emotional affair, with your main partner at your side, whether it's your spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend? If they were in the room, would you be saying the same things on the phone? If they were watching you type, would you be doing the same things? If you wouldn't do it with them in the room, then you shouldn't do them with out of the room. Um, how soon can you go on another date after a date? I just want a third date and I want to see him again. Chill. Wait, just chill a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying wait weeks, but wait a day or so. 
let the love grow. You know, longing is very exciting and slowing the pace creates greater excitement. Um, thank you for the happy Thanksgiving. Uh, any more questions over here on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube? I'm not seeing Twitter load, actually. I think they use something else. Um, am I on your For You page? It happens from time to time. I don't know why. I don't know the rhyme or reason of TikTok, um, but I'm there. Are you supposed to love the person you're engaged to every day? Because some days I hate my fiance. Nah, excellent question. No, the truth is having a close, intimate love relationship means in your own head, learning to negotiate with yourself the idea that some days you will absolutely hate them, right? Because deep love, even when you were a tiny baby or toddler, right? They say uh, uh, that at a certain point, you realize your mother's not perfect. And when you can integrate, Melanie Klein called it the depressive state. When you can integrate the fact that your mother was not perfect and did all kinds of things and you actually hated her at some point and yet still love her, then you have a healthy relationship. And the same goes with your adult lovers. Uh, Long-term committed monogamy is filled with phases and stages. And in one given day, you may absolutely hate somebody and another day, you might like them. Hey, Charms, how are you? Good to see you. Um, married two years. He's, oh, I'm sorry, it went too fast on TikTok. It's gone. What's a good book to learn more on how to handle avoided attachment men? The book called Attached. It's an excellent, excellent book that breaks down attachment theory very well. You should read the book Attached. Um, oh my gosh, they're all going so fast. I can't read them fast enough. <laughs> Charms wants to know how to trigger his vagus nerve. That's not Las Vegas nerve. It's a relaxation effect. Um, you activate your vagal tone. Besides deep breaths, believe it or not, you can jump in a body of cold water. Yes, take a cold shower. Literally, we hear people say that all the time, take a cold shower, but it makes a relaxation effect. Uh, deep breaths, cold shower. Would you Google that for me, Charms, and put it in the notes? Say how to activate your vagus nerve. And there's going to be a whole list of things. I just can't think of them all off the top of my head. Um, oh, thank you for your kind words. I'm trying to get to the questions. Thank you. Am I on the For You page? I don't know what that means. Is that a good thing? I just come out here and chat. That's what I do, folks. So TikTok, I come out here two guys, how to decide. Okay, this is really important because often when there are two people that you love or like equally and you can't decide, and I used to do this, I would do like a pro and con sheet. I'd pull out a piece of paper and write all the pros and cons. Um, it's actually a sign of sometimes attachment anxiety because you're so afraid to abandon even the thought or the love, the hope you can't even let go of hope that one could be better. So you know what you have to do? You have to dive in and focus on one and see what happens. Um, 10 units in the ear? Tens. You mean tens in the ear works for the vagus nerve? Transcutaneous electroneural muscle simulation? Oh, I didn't know you could put that in your ear. Uh, what do I think of men having friends who are girls? Well, um, as long as they socialize with those girls, with their significant other, if they're in a relationship. If they're not in a relationship, you can be friends with anybody of any gender, can't you? But if you're worried about that person being a threat to your relationship and you happen to be in a heterosexual relationship, um, then you've got to socialize with that person. Um, okay, here's a good one from Connecticut. Hello from Connecticut. How do I stop thinking about finding love and just live life? I keep thinking about who I will date and marry and I'm only 19 years old. Oh, sweetie, I love you. Listen, um, this is a sign of a little bit of an anxious attachment style. I want to say what you're at a stage of life that's so fascinating. You're 19 years old. So you're starting to move from your family of origin as your secure base. And you're starting to create a secure base with your peers, with your dating relationships, etc. And so thinking about it all the time is actually part of the transition, right? And so hopefully you had a secure attachment with your parents. Hopefully, um, You'll be able to transfer those good feelings of love to new people, um, but it's okay to just live life. Don't, don't feel pressured. People are delaying um, the beginning, the onset of their love relationships for a long time as they're getting educated and started to work. Um, 
what to do if two married people have met and fall in love. You got to divorce somebody. There's two divorces coming. That's what's happening. I mean, people don't just fall in love. You somehow unconsciously went out there and looked for that person because you're looking for a door out of your relationship. You may not be fully aware of those feelings and you might want to go to therapy to discuss them, but things don't just happen, right? People are like, I don't know what happened. It just happened. No, you spoke to the person, you flirted with the person, you called the person, you went to see the person, you did a bunch of things to bring you pleasure and maybe because you wanted to get out of an unpleasurable situation or you were bored and you just wanted some stimulation. Uh, Hire me, I'm a divorce attorney, she says, yeah. <laughs> Go get a family attorney. Um, that's a great, uh, I'm sorry, it's going so fast and it's so hard for me to read it here on TikTok. Um, oh, Charms has a good question. How long do I recommend waiting before me, people move in together? At least one calendar year of commitment, being a public relationship in a sexual relationship, being loyal to each other. Don't even think about living together until you've gone through four seasons together. These people that move in when they have the all the lust hormones, I'm just like, ugh. Mm. Um, oh, his personal assistant is his ex-wife. He claims no romantic involvement. I think he should cut the umbilical cord. You see, relationships are all an exchange of care, right? And that care can take so many forms, financial care, sexual care, domestic responsibility care, emotional support care, and she's giving him a kind of care. And that feels threatening to you. And maybe indeed it is. I don't know. What do you guys feel? Should an ex-wife be somebody's full-time assistant? It's a little too close. They're in their computer. They're in their money spending. They're in their schedule. That's a little too close as far as I'm concerned. What should you and your, when should you and your partner buy a house together? You can buy a house together anytime. You can be, you know, friends and roommates and have a real estate investment. Just better make sure you get a good contract, a lawyer, to make sure that you have a good contract together about who owns what and what happens if the market falls and you got to sell or one person loses their job. You got to put all those what ifs in there. Anybody can buy real estate together. You don't even have to be in a relationship. <laughs> Charm says I should be a preschool teacher. I've got that vibe. You know, somebody once asked me when I had a private practice, do you practice like adult psychotherapy or child therapy? And I said, it's all child therapy. It's just that the children are in bigger bodies now. But really, when we talk about our intimate love relationships, it is the most tender, delicate part of us. Uh how long should you wait between relationships? My boyfriend and I of 1.5 years just broke up. Well, I, I'm not a big believer in waiting. Get back on that horse and ride it. I mean, people think, oh, I've got to have some time alone and I've got to heal. And they go on a mountaintop and they meditate, and they do their yoga and they do their stuff. And then they walk out on the street and get hit by a bus, meaning another bad relationship. The only way to learn relationship skills is in relationships. So you got to be out there. You got to be dating. You got to be reject assessing, rejecting early on. The art of finding a good mate is learning very early that they're not a good mate. Because if you're looking for a needle in a haystack, you got to take all those other needles and throw them away before you find the actual needle that would be the one for you. Um, what to do? Married two years, he's mentally abusing, saying hurtful things. What do I do? Okay. In order for you to be strong enough to leave, you need to go get some psychotherapy. If you don't have health insurance that will cover mental health services to help you figure out your strength, then call any university. They always have counseling centers for very cheap that are PhD students that are supervised by supervisors. Uh, am I cooking a big meal tomorrow? I always go every year to my friend Maria's. It was canceled last year because of COVID. And I am in charge. We have about 25 people. And I am in charge this year of bringing the salad. So I'm going to make two salads. I'm going to make a Caesar, classic Caesar salad for those people that just want that. And then I'm going to do an arugula, pear, and Parmesan salad with a raspberry vinaigrette. That's tomorrow. Hi from Georgia. How are you? Hi. Oh, Julianne, you're in Belgium? What are you doing there? Visiting or are you, um, are you living there now? Uh, Corey says, why is it when I text less, 
my girlfriend calls me and texts more. Is that playing games? No, it's not playing games. I mean, the, the whole goal shouldn't be about manipulating and trying to get other people to behave in different ways. The goal should be having coping strategies for yourself and being able to just kind of like know that you're okay if you go a day or two without talking to them, right? So I, I don't think it's game playing. I mean, if you do it specifically to try to reel them back in, then yeah, it could be game playing. But if you just need a break to go get something done in your own life, then that's okay. And yeah, think of a relationship as a rubber band, right? One person pulls away and then it snaps back, should snap back because they feel lonely. One person pulls away, the other one snaps towards, right? It's just this constant rubber band happening. Even in long-term marriages, there's kind of like, a, you know, the tide goes in and out and sometimes the tide goes out too far and somebody rings the alarm bell and goes, hey, 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 we need a date night. We need some alone time. Do you think a guy who never wants a relationship will ever want one? He's in his 40s. Don't wait. Don't sit and wait for him. We don't know the answer to that. But I will tell you this. The very best predictor of somebody's future behavior is always their past behavior. That's it. Go with what they've done, not what you hope for in the future. Um, oh, visit. she's visiting. Happy Thanksgiving from Pittsburgh. Wonderful to see you. And what's your take on getting back with an ex? I would need to have a lot more information about those relationship dynamics. You should come to my Patreon room where we get into the real details. So I do this 15 minute -er at six o'clock Pacific time every Wednesday on my social media. And then I hop over to my private Zoom room where I see your faces. Well, you can keep your camera off if you're shy. So go to patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh to join our um, more intimate exclusive Zoom room where people talk. So that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. If you come on over there, you can join me for as little as $4 a month. We do weekly uh, Zoom rooms. All my podcasts are there. All my books are there. All my articles that I write are there. Uh, and you have access to me. Also, every week we do a drawing for a private one-on-one -on -one phone session with me. So it's a great way to get closer to me and really talk about your relationship stuff. Want to remind everybody, this is not therapy. You should think of it as advice giving from an educated friend. And I'm happy to weigh in. So thanks so much for being with me here on my social media, whether you're there on TikTok, whether you're here on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else. Um, come on over to my Patreon page because I'm about to go live there in 15 minutes. Patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Thanks for being here. Uh, yes, I've got lots of videos, Juan, about long distance. Check on my social media.